Going through this course, I'm generally going to assume that you have a little bit of Go experience. Now, you don't have to have a crazy amount of experience, but I'm assuming that you've built a Hello World program, um, that you, you know, know how to get something just up and running, that you have a basic idea of what things like variables are. Um, and that's mostly just because I can't teach both Go from the ground up and web development all in one course. But I do try to make the course accessible for everybody. You just might have to pause at times and you know go reference some other stuff or look up things to get a slightly better understanding of them. And in that vein, um, I kind of want to take the code that we have and show you which parts of it you're probably already familiar with so that in the future videos or in your future lessons, we only need to focus on the things that are new. So if we look at the code here, it, it kind of looks like there's a lot going on that you might not be familiar with. But the truth is, if you've written a Hello World program, you could probably actually come through here and comment out these particular lines. And the rest of this should be something you are very familiar with. Um, this is basically a Hello World program. The only difference is that instead of saying Hello World, we're saying starting the server on 3000. So this bit of code is the stuff that I'm assuming you've had a little bit of experience with. And it's like a Hello World app. Um, that's pretty much all that's going on. So what we're going to do in these next couple lessons is focus on the rest of this. And to do that, I think the first thing we need to do is really understand what a web request is. That way we can come back and understand why this handler function is structured the way it is. And we can understand what this slash means and just try to get a better feel for all the different pieces of it. Um, before we start proceeding with adding new code, changing this up a bit, and really experimenting and trying to get to understand it better. So that's it for this lesson. I just wanted to show you that a lot of this is stuff you're familiar with. There's really only what one, two, three, four, five, six new lines of code if you've written Hello World before. And this fump.fprint really isn't that different from what you've seen in the past. Um, I guess I could show that to you now. Um, this fump.fprint is going to be very, very similar dot fumped dot print uh, or print line, which we're using here. The only real difference here is that we actually tell it where to write to is the first argument. Then the second argument is what we're writing. So that's the only difference between this one and this one. And we could actually change this bottom line to be OS dot standard out. And I can write hello world. Um, and I could save, uh, I need to going to comment this one out. Um, you'll see here that we're importing the OS package now, but these two lines are roughly equivalent. Obviously they have different messages, but they're going to do roughly the same thing. So if I were to go run this, you'll see that both of them print out to the terminal and then the program exits. So what's happening here is that when we call fump.printline, if we go look at the source code, it's actually calling fprintline passing in os.standard out as the first argument. So it's actually using exactly what we wrote up here. It's just passing this in for us by default. And it's kind of just a helper function because it's very, very common when you're printing things out to want to print them out to standard out. So it, there's just helpers in most standard libraries of every programming language that will automatically do that for you. Um, but yeah, fprintline just basically is a way of doing that and saying, I want to actually explicitly tell you where I'm writing to. And then up here, um, the, I guess the other thing that makes a difference is that, or different, is that we're not writing to standard out, we're instead writing to the response writer. And we're going to dive into why that works or what that is in a future lesson, but I did want to show you that even this line here is pretty similar to what you've seen in the past if you've written a Hello World program. So there's maybe one, two, three, four, maybe five new lines of code here that we really need to dive into. But first, let's just explore what a web request is in the next lesson.